Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you're well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more relationship stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. Let's crack on with today's first story. Now, today's first story comes from a throwaway account who says, Beyonce, female 30, ghosted her job while pretending to go to work due to anxiety about getting promoted. She's since lost her job and is upset that I'm, male 31, upset. She, Rose, has been at her company for the past six years, and she works an office job in a non-customer-facing company. We have also been together for the past five years and put off our wedding until after graduating and after COVID. Recently, she was chosen to be promoted to a position in a different department after someone was leaving the company, and we knew about the promotion for some time. The woman who was leaving wasn't leaving until a certain date, but she was excited about the raise and getting promoted to a manager after years of wanting to be. However, as she neared closer to the date of the promotion, she began to ghost her job and ignore various warnings slash calls about absences because of her anxiety surrounding it. Anxiety she never chose to voice until after she had been fired for ghosting them for weeks. She would go to work in the morning and return at the time that her normal shift would end. But after she got fired, she wanted to talk to me. And she told me that she lied about going to work for the past two and a half weeks. When I asked her what happened, she said that a team wanted to throw her a small party to celebrate her promotion before she would leave. But the party made her anxious because she doesn't like to be celebrated because it's embarrassing. She also said that public speaking gave her anxiety too. And after learning that she would have to say a few words in a bigger joint meeting after receiving the new promotion, she couldn't bring herself to go to work and found other things to do during the time she was supposed to be there. She said that she'd often stay in her car, on her phone or go to the gym or a friend sometimes. And over the course of those two weeks, she ignored calls and emails from her job on her absences until she was fired after numerous warnings. She's since said that she wants to go to therapy to work on her anxiety before looking for a new job. And she asked if I could cover the expenses in the meantime. I told her no, because first she lied about going to work for over two weeks, got dressed and only wanted to talk after getting fired. I told her that I didn't appreciate her lying or entitlement to ask me to cover bills for a few months before she searches for a new job. And she said that I was being unfair because she's planning to go to therapy. While I told her that therapy is good, I said I needed a break to reconsider our relationship and engagement away from her. And she was fine with staying with a friend for a few days. However, when I called two days later and said I was done and wanted her to remove whatever belongings she didn't take with her, she and her friend began posting that I hit her when we talked, which is why she is breaking it off. Aside from texts and mutual friends, she also reached out to my job and had me talk to about it from my boss when I had no clue and found out during the meeting. I'm writing this because I want to ask if anyone's been in anything similar and how to manage this. I feel I was respectful in taking two days to myself before inviting her to remove her things whenever worked for her. But she just keeps posting about me hitting her and making fun of her for seeking therapy. Edit. The thing that made me the most upset was when she said that she would not go back to work for a few months until therapy was done. And now that she left her company, wanted me to pay for her to go to therapy too after she lost her benefits. Something I forgot to add in my post along with saying that is I can't afford it because of my salary. Now coming into this one, I felt real bad because, you know, public speaking and anxiety and you know, it's just so overwhelming sometimes, but and having had anxiety myself with those kind of things in the past as well, I can empathize with what she was going through. I'm not saying it was the right way to deal with things at all, but when it got to the bit where she's accusing you of hitting her, that was like a big whoa moment and I would be stepping back and I wouldn't be trusting this person or wanted to be around this person alone again. The fact that these things are being turned around on you, you know, that she's make that you're making fun of her for going to therapy and that you're hitting her that's absolutely awful and like i say in a lot of things it comes down to trust for me and i wouldn't be able to trust being around that person again trusting what they're going to say to their friends about me and potentially make up all sorts of things that could get you in real big trouble 
I mean, she already is. She's reached out to your boss and he's talked to you about this. And again, just from my point of view, you know, everyone's different. But from my point of view, I don't think there'd be any coming back from that. Bona Juice says, you have every right to be upset. This is borderline, this associative behavior. I wouldn't marry her. This behavior is not a small matter. OP replies saying, I feel like I was pretty direct with her after taking a little over a day to think and tell her that I was done and nicely ask her to remove her things, only for her to start her social media stuff and calling my job. Crown Hill Digger says serious character flaw, lying to you and pretending are huge red flags. You should not be alone with her again, given her allegations. OP says she lost her benefits after leaving. She said she wouldn't go back to work for a few months until after therapy was done. Wanted me to pay for therapy because I can afford it with my salary and went to such lengths to lie and even bring in spare clothes in her car after getting dressed every morning to pretend to go to work. No Canary says, look, she's got problems, big problems, but instead of facing them, she hides, blames others and tries to manipulate you into being okay with this. Oh, now outright spreading hateful and harmful lies. Nope, you've done nothing wrong. In fact, your choices are right. Now to block it in every way and do damage control. Grieve, but get away from her and anyone who supports her bullshit. P.S. Sorry you've had to go through this. But though you don't feel lucky now, you've made a very lucky escape. Opie responds and literally got talked to at my job after she called them. Already blocked her on a lot of things, but the job thing surprised me. And one more from OG Kitten Mittens who says, As someone with anxiety, I've been in a situation and sounds like she is going through what I went through a few years ago. Now that I'm healthy, I actually cannot describe why everything was so difficult that I avoided everything. But I was so deeply overwhelmed. Doing regular things for other people can be unimaginable when your anxiety is out of control. I don't think she is doing this because she is just lazy. She fucked up and you have every right to be mad at her or even leave her over this. But if you love her in general, she may just need time to talk it out with a therapist or get on medication to get it under control. Even though it sounds batshit to you, I've been there and I do not recognize who I was then. I am much happier and very functional now. So if you have the patience and love her otherwise, it could be worth the wait to support her in this tough time. I'm not trying to excuse her behavior because she is definitely not handling, well, life well. But it doesn't sound like she is doing it to be mean or lazy. Also, I don't think it's entitled to be engaged and have a partner cover your bills for a short period while you find work. What happens if you get fired or in an accident at work, etc, etc? she would support you. An OP responds saying that, I don't want to discredit you or anything you said at all. And I really believe that therapy can work. I also tried my best to tell her that I supported her getting therapy despite not telling me about any of her challenges until after she got fired when we should have been able to confide in each other. However, the thing that made me most upset was when she said that she would not go back to work for a few months until therapy was done. And now she left her company wanted me to pay for her to go to therapy too after she lost her benefits. Something I forgot to add in my post along with saying that I can afford it because of my salary. So then OP came back to update the post which says we would have been married already if not for COVID making us delay plans but after everything that has happened I believe it was for the best. A manager in a different department of her office was retiring and she was chosen to be promoted in her place. Her promotion wouldn't start until the woman left and it would have been the first she's ever been a manager in her life. However, as the promotion neared, she decided to ghost her job and pretend to go to work after years of wanting to become a manager that resulted in her being fired. She'd leave for work at her usual morning time and returning the evening as she always did. But even after she was fired, she didn't come clean until another week had passed. When I asked her what happened, she said that her team wanted to throw a small party before her last day and that it gave her anxiety. She also said that she hated being celebrated and felt anxious about having to speak at a joint meeting after receiving the promotion. So she pretended to go to work instead, ghosting work calls too, getting dressed in the morning for two weeks before getting fired and going to her friend's or gym with a change of clothes. When she came clean, she said that she wanted to go to therapy to work on herself and that she wanted me to pay for it because I could afford it while also covering her side of the rent. And that was when I said I needed a break after allowing for three plus weeks to reconsider everything. I told her I needed a day. And she agreed to stay at a friend's and two days later, I told her I was done and wanted her to collect her things. That was when she started to slander me. 
What happened since? As I stated last time about her response, she took to Twitter and said that I hit her after she admitted her anxiety to me. She also wrote that she decided to break up with me after she opened up and that I became aggressive and was against mental health. She also reached out to my job, which led to me getting called to my office. And since my last post, her friend has joined in her spreading lies too. The friend who she was staying with, Stacy, her friend, fake name, posted about how my ex-fiance crashed with her because I was aggressive in the past and didn't want her to accept the promotion. She also posted that I was jealous and insecure and threatening, and threatening her to not accept it too. I've since reached out to a lawyer who's been helping me a ton, but I've lost some friends who decided to take her side and she didn't even have the decency to get her stuff. She sent two of her friends while she waited in the car, completely refusing to see me at all. And while I didn't lose my current job, she called another job that she knew I was interviewing for some time. I haven't heard back about my second interview since. I'm discussing how we can address that with my lawyer at the moment, but I wanted to ask how to move on from not only her, but also the friends who took her side and how it's crept into other areas too. It's just been really stressful seeing a new side of her through her lies, and it's really come as a shock in many ways. It's like she's done a 180 so fast, and it's really hard to focus on other things or gain sleep too. And that was the final post from OP, but the comments were pretty much just going down the path of the lawyer is your best bet in this situation. And, you know, don't engage with her at all because, you know, she could try and twist things to try and cause even more trouble for you. But what would you advise to OP in this situation? I think lawyering up is going to be the best way, right? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Let's move on to another story which comes from Happy Single Dwarf, who says, Am I the arsehole for telling my sister-in-law that I will call the cops for child abandonment the moment she steps out of the house? Me, 25 male, my brother Jack, 27 male, and his wife, Jill, 25 female. It all started when Jack and Jill got pregnant. The lease almost ended and my parents invited them to stay at our house. The day they came, Jack asked me why I haven't moved out of my room yet. I was confused, like, what the fuck? And he told me that he and Jill will be at my room and I go to the guest room. I refused, but my parents got mad. We got into a fight and I lost and ended in a much smaller guest room. Then Jill had a problem with my cooking. I ate scrambled eggs with mozzarella and avocado every day for breakfast and she couldn't stand the smell. She asked me to stop. I refused. My parents got involved. I had to stop. There were problems with other food too and I had to stop cooking for them. I was told I must be more accommodating because she's pregnant. Like that is my problem. Then Jill started to boss me around. We were alone for eight hours while my parents and Jack worked. She obviously thought I would be her personal maid. I refused. She threw a temper tantrum and like always and I again had a big fight with Jack and my parents. I was told that she had a high risk pregnancy and was on bed rest and I'm an arsehole for not helping her. I told Jack that he knocked her up. It's his responsibility. I stood my ground and in the end, Jill's cousin came to help her sometimes. Then Jill gave birth to my nephew. I congratulated them when they came home and that is it. I don't like babies, so I mostly keep to myself now. But that doesn't stop Jill to ask for favors. Please watch the baby while I take a quick shower. Please watch it while I make myself some food, etc. I always refuse and we all have new fights over and over again. It all came to a head last Friday when she asked me to watch my nephew while she goes to the pharmacy for baby formula. I refused. She got mad and we had a fight. She grabbed her purse to go anyway and I told her that the moment she walks out of the door, I will call the police for child abandonment. I was serious and she knew it. She broke down and screamed what a horrible human being I am. Then she ran to her room. She had a complete mental breakdown. When Jack and my parents came home, we had the biggest fight yet. Jack accused me of hating Jill and my nephew, upon other things. I told him I refused to bond because they will weaponize him against me. My parents told me enough is enough, and they can't believe that they raised such a selfish human being, and that either I help or I move out. I'm thinking of the second option. Am I the arsehole? Edit, I work from home and pay 50% of all household expenses, including mortgage. Jack and Jill don't contribute anything for expenses. 
And now we're going to move into the comments and always take into consideration these might have been before the edit where OP said that they pay 50% of all the household expenses. So, Andante79 says, this sounds like a super shitty situation in general. Info, why can't Jill take the baby with her on her errands? Why do you still live at home and how much rent do you pay? Which we know. How much rent do Jack and Jill pay? Which again, we know. Edit, so based on OP's response, Jill just doesn't want to parent her child all day. They pay nothing towards the house and treat OP like shit. In your shoes, OP, I might, maybe, sometimes watch the kid while a parent grabs a shower. I would not, however, be free in-house babysitting under any circumstances, barring a genuine emergency. The way they seem to treat you, though, I can't say I blame you if you just refuse outright, as long as this has been made clear to everyone, not the asshole. OP responded saying, I am the major contributor. Jack and Jill pay zero. Jill doesn't work. I wanted to stay home and take care of my parents when they are old. I will never have a partner and children because reasons. So taking care of my parents was the plan. The moment I move out, they will have problems paying for mortgage and all other expenses. Entitled princess will probably have to go back to work. OP goes on saying, the moment I move out, our relationship will end. It's easier said than done. I don't think even my parents expect me to actually do it. I just contribute. Nothing is in my name. And I've got to say, OP saying stuff like that does make me worried instantly. You know, they're paying 50% of the mortgage by the sounds of it. So they're making these major financial contributions and have nothing to show for it. And, and the way that OP's being treated and the brother's being treated in this one already makes me think, you know, when the time comes, and I hate to say that sort of thing, but when the time comes and the house gets passed on or anything like that, you're not going to get the fair share of what you've put into it. Maybe you're comfortable with that, but it certainly doesn't sit right with me thinking about it. But Unhappy Coffee says, the amount of you're the assholes. OP is a paying tenant in this house. He has no obligation whatsoever to watch this child. Not the asshole. ETA, would you give the same response if OP was just a roommate? No, the sister-in-law is not entitled to OP's time, ever. Cupcake Frosten says, dude, I don't think that you're an asshole, but you are a bit dramatic and I am too. So here's what you should do. Move out and stop paying for everything. See how your family reacts when half the money is gone. Not the asshole. Amazing Cranberry says, you should move out. Everybody sounds awful. I'm more sympathetic to OP because I was in a situation where I was older, covered the bills of the home, and I was often left without notice for long hours, sometimes days, taking care of elderly or children that I had not agreed to and for people who refused to make alternative arrangements because no one thought I had a right to say no because I was single and childless and a general doormat. It doesn't make a difference who is right or wrong. Move out. You don't want to do it and it is not your responsibility. And that is enough. It me.gif says everyone sucks here. There are some valid reasons for you to be upset, including having to change your eating habits for sister-in-law and losing your room when you contribute 50% of the household expenses. Really just move out because you'll be much happier. That being said, dude, the woman is alone with a newborn and clearly struggling to cope. You complain about her a lot, but I'm not hearing anything about how little it seems your brother is doing, which is leading her to rely on you so much. It is assholeish to not let the poor woman shower or watch the baby, aka listen to a baby monitor while she runs to the store for food real quick. I get not wanting to be the person she relies on, but rather than acting like a dick and starting fights, have a calm conversation and point out that you aren't the child's parents. If you were handling this better, you'd be 100% not the asshole. You don't want to live with a baby, so move out and you'll be happier. And one more from Stealthy J who says everyone sucks here. I was kind of leaning towards you being the asshole until that edit. But you shouldn't be kicked out of your room when you pay 50% of the expenses for two people who don't contribute shit. It's never okay to leave your baby with someone who does not want to be a babysitter either. That being said, you seem very resistant to doing anything to help them out at all. Move on out, but remind them first that you aren't paying any of their household expenses if you do. My kind of question at the end of this is, is what is OP getting out of kind of any of these relationships? You know, OP said he's paying 50% of everything in the household and doesn't seem to be getting any sort of respect or anything for it, really. Instead, he wants to, like, look after his parents as they get older. But again, feels like they're showing him very little respect at the same time, making him move out of his room. I mean, he's 25 years old. And I kind of feel like in this situation, 
it would be just simplest to be moving out. I mean, you're paying, you're paying more than your fair share. You could be living the life you want to live right now without having people constantly on your back about what you eat, the room you're in, and things like that. But I'd love to know your opinion on this story. What, how would you handle this situation if it was you? Would you be moving out? Would you maybe have cared for the baby like some people suggested? Or do you think absolutely not? That's not your responsibility. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Now, a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart for getting involved in today's stories, your love, support, and time. Always means the absolute world to me. So thank you so much for being involved. And hopefully I will see you in the next one. Take care and much love. Yeah, man, I remember being so naive when life was good, weather and palm trees. Back in the day, you were everything I need. But then along came a time when you crushed my dreams. Oh yeah, you played me like a fool when you made me believe that the line between love wasn't thick enough to read. Oh yeah, you see we in the spare crime everywhere. You're selling false hope cause you just don't care.